the Earth has been rudely awakened by the terrifying power of the largest volcano ever known to mankind. The sky is painted with a surreal display of ash, reaching unimaginable heights, as if nature unleashes its fury upon us. But what lies beneath this catastrophic event? Could it be an introduction of even greater devastation to come? Join us as we unravel the mysteries of Shivaluch, the massive Russian volcano that refuses to be tamed. Rising majestically above the lowlands, Shivaluch stands as a witness to its explosive might. With over 60 eruptions during the Holocene period, this volcanic mountain has a rich and tumultuous history dating back to 10,000 years. Its fiery temperament has shaped the landscape leaving behind scarred and captivating beauty. The eruptions of Shivalish have left a trail of destruction in their wake, wreaking havoc through debris avalanches, scorching pyroclastic flows, and mighty tephra falls. Understanding these events and spatial distribution of crucial in predicting and mitigating the impacts of these natural hazards. In the chronicles of Shivalish's fiery reign, the last major eruption was 2005, leaving an indelible mark on the landscape. Delving further into history, we discover a series of powerful explosions punctuating the centuries. From the resounding echoes of AD 1030 to the thunderous outbursts of 1964, the volcanic fury of Shivalish has left an indomitable imprint. Remarkably, some of these eruptions, such as those in AD 1050, 1650, 1854, in 1964 may have even wielded climatic influence, their impact potentially recorded in the ancient ice cores of Greenland. As one of Kamchatka's largest volcanic structures, Shivalich boasts a massive volume of approximately 1,300 cubic kilometers, making it an unrivaled force of nature. Its summit, once crowned by the ancient starry Shivalich, bears the marks of a cataclysmic event around 65,000 years ago. The remnants of this ancient mountain gave way to the young Shivalich, a lava dome complex that emerged from the ashes. But Shivalich is a master of chaos and destruction. With a frequency that sets it apart from volcanic brethren, this volcano frequently experiences dome collapses, triggering devastating debris avalanches. The remnants of these eruptions cover the caldera floor, leaving an eerie reminder of nature's immense power. Another tantalizing theory postulates the existence of two distinct slabs beneath the volcano, each with its own subduction angle and pressure temperature paths, giving rise to the remarkable diversity of basaltic andesites. 60 eruptions in 10,000 years might not be a big deal until we look at the magnitude of those eruptions. If you remember the Mount St. Helen eruption in 1980, which is still referred to as the most disastrous volcanic eruption in the history of the United States, it claimed 57 lives and had a blast radius of about 6.1 miles from the summit. Scary, right? While well, Shivalich volcano has had 15 such mega eruptions, which is enough for us to be concerned about. Before discussing the world's largest volcano, we have a short history lesson about the famous eruption of Mount St. Helen. Months before the devastating eruption, a series of ominous signs hinted at the impending disaster. Thousands of small earthquakes, billowing steam, and a massive bulge protruding 450 feet into the sky were harbingers of the volcanic inferno building within the mountain's core. Then, at 8.32 a.m. local time, chaos erupted. A colossal 5.1 magnitude earthquake shook the very foundations of Mount St. Helens, triggering an unimaginable chain of events. The sheer force of the quake triggered an enormous landslide, causing the entire northern face of the volcano to collapse in a terrifying display of destruction. As if that wasn't enough, hot pressurized magma erupted from the depths unleashing an ash plume that soared to an astonishing height of 80,000 feet, or 15 miles, or 24 kilometers. The surrounding region was plunged into darkness as the blanket of ash settled over the land, transforming it into an otherworldly landscape. 
an area spanning 230 square miles, 595 square kilometers, was obliterated in minutes, leaving nothing but devastation in its wake. It was a deadly blow that claimed the lives of 57 individuals, including the brave volcanologist David A. Johnson and talented photojournalist Reed Blackburn. The once lush and vibrant forest that adorned the slopes of Mount St. Helens was reduced to mere ash within the inner blast zone, extending 6.2 miles, 10 kilometers from the summit. Even trees beyond this zone suffered the scorching heat, leaving behind a desolate expanse named the Blowout Zone. But the destruction didn't stop there. The eruption gave birth to deadly mud flows known as lahars, as melting ice and snow mixed with volcanic debris. These monstrous forces of nature wreaked havoc on nearby communities, ravaging homes, roads, and bridges in their relentless path. Even today, 43 years after that fateful day, the impact of Mount St. Helens eruption continues to be felt. Just days before the anniversary, a debris flow formed from the remnants of the eruption unleashed its destructive power, toppling a bridge on State Highway 504, also known as Spirit Lake Highway. Access and power to the Johnson Ridge Observatory nestled in the heart of the blast zone. Now back to Shivalich, let's quick trip down memory lane and explore some of its most recent eruptions. One of the most explosive volcanic eruptions in Kamchatka's history is that of Shivalich on November 12, 1964. With an astonishing volume of small pyroclastic material ejected, estimated at around 0.8 cubic kilometers, the eruption of Shivalich in 1964 left an indelible mark on the landscape. Despite its short duration and occurrence during the dark of night, scientists could piece together the puzzle through meticulous studies of deposits, seismograms, and barograms. One of the key discoveries that shed light on the eruption's character was the identification of the directed blast agglomerate. This coarse-grained resurgent deposit with a distinctive hamaki surface covered 98 square kilometers at the southern foot of the volcano. This type of deposit had been previously observed during the catastrophic eruption of the Bezimiani volcano in 1956. In the case of Shivalush, similarities were drawn to the 1956 Bezimiani eruption. Although the equivalent of the directed blast sand observed in Bezimiani's deposits were not found, scientists still classify the Shivalich eruption as a directed blast type. The young Shivalish volcano had a tumultuous history leading to the 1964 eruption. In 1854, a powerful eruption formed a horseshoe-shaped crater, 1.5 kilometers in diameter, and open toward the south. Over the following century, several extrusive domes grew within the crater, completely filling it. The last dome, with a volume of 0.9 cubic kilometers, was formed between 1946 and 1949. After 1950, the domes exhibited intense fumarolic activity, but no significant explosive activity was observed. The eruption of Shivalish on November 12, 1964, followed a prolonged period of seismic preparation. Earthquakes began to rumble beneath the volcano in January of that year, with a notable increase in frequency and energy from October onwards. Just seven hours before the eruption, earthquakes became so frequent that their records became unreadable, and some were even felt in neighboring towns. At 7.07 a.m., a powerful earthquake marked the beginning of the eruption. The explosive activity commenced, gradually intensifying over time. Incandescent materials erupted about 7.20 a.m., accompanied by volcanic tremors and a surge of airwave energy. Pyroclastic flows cascaded down the slopes in the final stages of the eruption, coinciding with a sharp increase in volcanic tremor energy. The eruption ceased at approximately 8.22 a.m., accompanied by a rapid attenuation of volcanic tremor intensity. The eruption column reached a staggering height of about 15 kilometers. A new horseshoe-shaped crater, 1,750 meters in diameter, and mirroring the contours of the 1854 crater was formed. The destruction caused by the eruption is estimated to have amounted to 1.54 cubic kilometers of volcanic edifice. 
Another major eruption in Shivalish's history happened in the turbulent year of 1999 when the mighty volcano showed its true colors. From August to December 1999, Shivalush was shrouded in a cloak of clouds. But when the skies cleared, small but mighty fumarolic gas and steam plumes danced skyward, reaching 50 to 200 meters. And if that wasn't impressive enough, there were days when the plumes soared even higher, capturing the attention of all who dared to look. But the real showstopper was the explosive action that unfolded throughout the year. Four short but impactful explosions rocked the volcano, unleashing ash-bearing plumes that couldn't be ignored. And seismic activity even detected up to five additional dome explosions, adding an extra element of danger. It was simply a symphony of chaos. On the 11th and 13th and 14th of August, fumarolic plumes gracefully rose above the crater teasing the onlookers. But it was on August 15th when Shivalich truly made its presence known. In a spectacular five-minute display, an ash explosion shot a plume a staggering 800 meters into the sky, leaving everyone in awe. As months passed, the volcano kept everyone on their toes. Fumarolic plumes rising like phoenixes graced the skyline on various occasions. Whether August, September, October, or beyond, Shivalish was bent on making its voice heard. And then, on the morning of October 27th, an ash explosion sent seismic activity skyrocketing and painted the horizon with an ash plume stretching to the northeast. Seismicity reached a crescendo in late October through mid-November, increasing hazard status. The ground trembled, warning people of the impending danger lurking within Shlivalich's core. On the fateful morning of November 1st, the volcano erupted explosively, spewing ash up to an altitude of 5.5 to 6 kilometers, leaving an indelible mark on the southern landscape. Dome explosions continued to punctuate the following days, a symphony of shallow earthquakes and tremors that made everyone hold their breath. On November 24th, the sky witnessed a dramatic gas and ash plume reaching three kilometers above the crater. But Shivalich wasn't finished yet. It ejected more captivating plumes in the following weeks. As 1999 drew to a close, Shivalich had one final surprise. On the morning of December 27th, a possible gas and ash plume hinted at its untamed spirit, leaving us wondering what wonders the future held for this majestic volcano? So why is this ancient volcano making news again? In the dead of night, just after midnight on Tuesday, April 11th, 2023, the Shivalich roared back to life, and over the next six hours, it reached a crescendo, spewing forth a colossal ash cloud and stretched over an astonishing area of 108,000 square kilometers. 41,700 square miles. Can you even imagine the magnitude of this event? Reports from the Kanchatka branch of the Geophysical Survey of the Russian Academy of Sciences indicate that the ash cloud soared to a jaw-dropping altitude of 20 kilometers, 12.5 miles. Picture this, a towering column of ash piercing the sky, painting a dark veil above the snowy forests and rivers. It was a sight to behold, simultaneously mesmerizing and terrifying. But the impact didn't stop there. The ash cloud carried by the winds drifted westwards, descending upon nearby villages with relentless force. Houses, streets, and fields were soon buried under a thick layer of gray volcanic dust, reaching depths of up to 8.5 centimeters, 3.3 inches, this was the most substantial ashfall the region had witnessed in over 60 years. As if the volcanic eruption wasn't enough, the region experienced another jolt. A magnitude 5.8 earthquake struck off the coast of Kamchatka approximately 24 hours after the eruption began. Russian scientists believe it to be an aftershock from an April earthquake. The situation became even more critical with lava flowing from the volcano melting snow and raising concerns about mudflows along the nearby highway. 
schools were forced to close, and residents were ordered to stay indoors, seeking refuge from the relentless ashfall. The entire region came to a standstill, paralyzed by the volcanic chaos. The aviation community was not spared either. Volcanologists issued a code red warning for flights, urging pilots to remain vigilant and monitor the ever-changing meteorological conditions. Safety was paramount, and precautions were taken to ensure the well-being of all those navigating the skies. Who knows what else this volcano has in store? Do you think it will ever go extinct? Please share your thoughts in the comments below. If you found this video interesting, don't forget to like it, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel for more content.